Hello, I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land where QUT stands, the Turrbal and Yugara peoples, and pay my respect to their elders past, present and emerging. And by way of background, I just wanted to let you know that the pcc for You project is Australian government funded. The project aims to improve the skill and confidence of the health workforce to work with people with palliative care needs. And we do this by promoting the integration of palliative care training within all entry to practice health curricula. Before Steph takes you through the EN toolkit and work we are doing to support enrolled nurse training, I just wanted to highlight some of the recent influences on the health workforce in Australia and the role that palliative care education is taking to meet emerging priorities. Palliative Care Australia is the national peak body for palliative care. PCA released the National Palliative Care Standards and Service Development Guidelines in 2018. PCA's position is that palliative care is everyone's business. Palliative care needs to be available in many different settings, as can be seen on this model. In people's homes, acute hospitals, hospices, which may be community-based or led by tertiary facilities, general practices, specialist clinics, aged care facilities, and other organisations in which people may be living, such as correctional facilities and locations caring for people living with severe mental illness or severe disabilities. So it stands then that all health professionals working with any, within any of these environments should have minimum core palliative care capabilities to support the provision of palliative care. PCA uses its national platform to influence policy directions to this end. The report Investing to Save, the Economics of Increased Investment in Palliative Care in Australia, was commissioned by Palliative Care Australia and prepared by KPMG. It was released last year. The report calls for an overhaul of palliative care investment of just over 350 million which they indicate will result in a saving of over 450 million across the broader healthcare system each year. This quote by a geriatrician and palliative medicine specialist at the recent Parliamentary Friends of Palliative Care event highlights some of the frustrations being felt by clinicians and services in Australia. Within the economic report, there are specific service recommendations for home, community and residential care, which would lead to positive returns on investment. There is a call for action to explicitly embed palliative care in service delivery in these settings, as you can see in the recommendations. In addition, recommendation 4.4 calls for the expansion of pal the palliative care workforce and increased palliative care literacy across the wider health sector, which has implications for education and training. In 2016, residential and home care services workforce comprised over 17,000 enrolled nurses and over 180,000 personal care assistants or care workers. The Aged Care Royal Commission considered this workforce in its final report released last month. This word cloud teases out some of the descriptors of quality aged care, which I identified in my review of the report. Equity, autonomy, respect, culturally safe care and dignity are all central to quality palliative care. And we will be certainly monitoring how the recommendations of the report are addressed over the next couple of years and responding with updated resources as needed. Internationally, care of the older person is also being addressed. The World Health Organization released a new report last month, the Global Report on Aging, which outlines a framework for action to reduce ageism. Our Royal Commission found that ageism is a systemic problem in Australian community and leads to an undervaluing of the worth of the older person, resulting in poorer service provision in aged care. If we want older Australians to receive the best care, we must ensure they are valued and supported members of society. The attitudes of care providers towards older people can be shaped in entry to practice training, 
and I applaud you and all the educators who are working to this end. Through the provision of authentic learning experiences, pcc for You is striving to further foster compassion and empathy in the health workforce. So that is a very quick snapshot of some of the influences on the current and emerging health workforce. There is currently a significant focus on aged care and palliative care, and I do acknowledge that palliative care is not always undertaken just with the older person. But I will hand over now to Steph as she explores strategies to develop palliative care knowledge and skills within your health students. Thank you.